Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel, you will recognize this system. It is a little bit of a tinker system that we put together. It contains a sixth generation Intel platform, and we actually got it for free. Somebody gave us that system, and we've been doing a complete overall on it. But one of the things that you guys asked us to do was actually upgrade the CPU. So we're going to be taking this machine from the i5-6500 that's inside of it, and we're going to be upgrading it with this. Okay, so let's go through some of the background on this system. Originally, this was given to us in the form of some kind of really old server and it was missing parts. And we really just wanted to catch up with the Intel sixth generation and see if we could still game on it. In the first video that we did on it, we actually added a power supply as well as a graphics card. It wasn't this one, it was actually an RX 6600. And we found out actually that it was a pretty capable system. Thanks to our friends at Techware, we managed to give this system a complete overhaul when it came to looks. It actually looks like a brand new system now. We included the case, we included the new cooler and it's got full RGB, so it looks pretty cool. And while we were doing that, we actually changed out the graphics card to this one. We actually installed a GTX 980 Ti because that was a little bit more period appropriate for the system that was in there. But today we're going to actually be changing something else and we're going to be upgrading that CPU. The CPU that you guys recommended was, of course, this one. This is the i7 6700 and it does have a little bit of a difference to the one that's already in this system. The 6500 inside it is a four core, full thread processor, but when it comes to the i7, it's a little bit more enhanced. The i7 does come with four cores but it also comes with eight threads meaning that we've got much more to play with and it also features hyper threading something that the 6500 doesn't. So actually when it comes to gaming this processor should be far superior to what's in there. Now once this upgrade is actually complete this will actually make this a very typical high-end system from 2015. If anybody was building gaming PCs back then this probably would have been a configuration that everybody really wanted. We have one of the fastest consumer CPUs that was actually there of course. There is a K version to this but we're not going to be using that because we're not going to be overclocking on the old motherboard that's in here anyway and then the graphics card being the 980 ti was of course nvidia's flagship and that was a pretty fast graphics card back then so with the system being pretty high end from 2015 it would make a pretty good test today to see how well this system actually performs in some of the more modern games so now we've got the cpu installed and the system is all hooked up we're just going to pop into the bios by turning the system on find the power button there We'll pop into the BIOS, double check, make sure that CPU is getting picked up and everything is fine. In the BIOS, we can clearly see that we're using an Intel Core i7-6700 at 3.40 gigahertz. We're not going to do any kind of overclocking. We're probably not even going to be able to get away with it on this motherboard anyway. We've got our RAM, everything seems to be found and everything is running perfectly fine. So we'll dip out of here and then we'll get into Windows and we'll see how snappy that is. Now getting into Windows is perfectly fine. It's actually really quick to boot up. I'm quite surprised to be honest because even some of the more modern systems don't boot up as quick as this one did. This is running just a standard SATA SSD as well and that's what the operating system is loaded on and it seems perfectly fine to be honest. We have given the machine a bit of a green glow in the RGB. It looks pretty nice. And to be totally honest, the machine is actually shaping up to be something real decent. But of course, we want to see how well it can actually game with that CPU. Installing it was absolutely no issue. We got no issues at all. It just dropped the CPU in, reapplied some thermal paste, booted straight up into Windows. So for anybody wanting to make this kind of actual upgrade to their older system, you can rest assured that it's a pretty simple process. But let's get into some games. And the first game that we want to try is something a little bit simple. We'll try something reasonably modern, but maybe not a hugely modern. And then we'll get onto something like that later. And that game is, of course, Doom Eternal, a game that is actually very well optimized and pretty much runs pretty well on most things. But it does look gorgeous and you can really kind of uh, ramp the settings up on this just to really test some hardware like this. But we'll pop into the settings first and we'll see what we're actually configured at we'll pop to our video settings scroll down we're at some really weird resolution here so we're going to pop that up to 1080p we're going to restrict all the testing today to 1080p and that's because this system is showing its age a little bit and it'll be really good even if we can get some of the more modern games to just play reasonably well in that kind of resolution as we continue to scroll down we've got our vsync turned off and we just want to double check our settings and they are set to high high is pretty reasonable for any system in this game it does look pretty stunning but we'll set that and then we'll jump back into game as we can see from our stats in the corner just in this piece here there's not a lot going on on the screen but we are getting an average of 116 or 115 frames per second with a fantastic one percent low of 105 that actually clearly goes to show that this cpu is handling this game perfectly fine at the moment it's running at around 50 percent utilization whereas the 6500 previously would have been running it probably somewhere around the 90s and really holding that graphics card back but to be honest this one is performing exceptionally well the graphics card is running at 99 percent which means 
we are getting the full utilization of that GTX 980 Ti and it really goes to show if anybody did have this system you know when 2019 I believe this game was released so at least four years after the system would have been built you'd be glad to know that you could actually play this perfectly fine now Doom Eternal is actually a pretty easy game to run of course so let's load up something else something a little bit more demanding and see how well it performs with that now the next game we're going to be testing is of course Spider-Man Remastered it was released in 2022 it's not the most demanding game out there particularly out of some of the more modern games but it will actually give that CPU a bit more of a test because open world games, and which this one is a very large open world game, tend to be kind of CPU dependent really. So let's just jump in. As we can see from the stats at the top, we're currently getting an average of 62 frames per second. That means that the game is more than playable. Actually, the average is now around 72, so it increases depending on where we are. I've tend to find that when we run up buildings like this, the FPS does increase um, and it's mostly when you're actually on the ground that you do see the kind of real demand. We are getting an average 1% low of around 50 FPS, which again makes the game really, really smooth. And we're getting some real utilization here of that CPU, currently jumping between 80 to 100%. But if we drop to our settings, we'll see what we're actually configured in. We go to our display settings we are in 1080p again we're going to keep it to 1080p we have no upscaling method turned on we could turn that on and get even more performance and that's the beauty of having some older tech like this and some of these new software technologies coming out you can really give a new lease of life to that kind of technology but in our graphics we can see that we're running in high i'm going to leave it as that that's pretty decent all round and we'll just have a bit of a swing around the city and see what actually happens we are now currently averaging around 90 frames per second but we were on top of the building so let's go closer to the ground and see how things are actually panning out as we run around to the ground here we can see that our fps is dropping a little bit we're now at around 70 72 fps with a one percent low of still 50 so that's not too bad we haven't had any major dips or drops in performance anywhere we seem to be swinging around quite happily we did just see then 55 frames per second on average but it's not too bad overall it's kind of averaging out really to about 73 fps and obviously the higher we go the higher that fps goes system is starting to warm up now with the gpu getting to around 78 degrees c it's not uh, unusual for a blower style cooler like the one we've got in our fe model and as we can see, there is a bit of an exchange going on when it comes to utilization of the CPU and the GPU with one increasing above the other, depending on what we're looking at and the other increasing at other times. But all in all, it seems to be a bit of a fair pairing here. They are actually challenging each other and performing exceptionally well. This game also does look stunning when you actually lower the settings. If you were to run this in a medium, you're going to get a pretty console like experience, but that's perfectly fine because you're obviously going to increase that FPS if you really need to. Playing Spider Man isn't actually that important when it comes to frames per second, as long as they're not stupidly low, you can get away with playing this at around 60 FPS in 1080p and it would look pretty stunning and play really, really smooth. So, of course, we know that if you did build a system like this in 2015, by the time you got to 2022, which was five, six, seven years later, you're still playing games just like this perfectly fine. So let's actually give it a bit more of a throttle in with something even more newer and even more demanding and we'll see how well it copes with that now while we're actually preparing shaders on the next game that we want to test i just wanted to actually point out that this system has actually given us no fuss at all it the gpu did get a little bit warm playing the last game but to be honest overall it's a reasonably quiet machine there's no real noise coming from it everything is just loading up first time we're getting no issues at all when it comes to windows things are just pretty snappy just like a modern system is really to be honest i'm actually reasonably impressed with how this system is really turning out the i7 6700 is much better than i thought it was actually going to be i didn't think it was going to be this much of a leap over the 6500 but clearly uh, there, there is a massive difference when it comes to those extra threads and particularly with hyper threading being enabled the cpu's got quite a bit more poke in it now one of the things that you will notice when you actually have a machine like this particularly with a cpu this old is that there's a major difference between how much it can actually perform when it comes to doing things like preparing shaders this is obviously hogwarts legacy and it does this short kind of preparing shaders at the beginning like lots of modern games do the last time I actually loaded up this was on a 14900K and the bar actually just went whoop straight up. You, it was kind of like a few seconds really to get those shaders prepared. But with this system, it took a little bit longer. So if you do have a system like this, or at least if you're going to build something like this, just be prepared for that kind of stuff really. But 
We are now in Hogwarts Legacy. Everything's loaded up. Everything's working perfectly fine at the moment. We'll get into the game and then we'll have a look. I did want to play this game because I am currently playing it on my home system. So it kind of does give me a good kind of comparison between an old system like this and my much more newer one. And also it is an open world game. So it's really going to kind of hammer that CPU if anything does. Now, before we start running around, let's head over to the settings and see what we've actually got configured. If we go to our settings here, we drop into our video settings or display settings. We are in winded full screen. We're running with FSR 2, so this must have preset some things. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go for as native as we possibly can. Our V-Sync is turned off. Our frame limit is uncapped, so we should get pretty decent on there. I do turn off a lot of these settings when I play, like motion blur. I've turned that off. The chromatic aberration is turned off and film grain too i don't like those kind of things and this will give us a bit of a fairer test we'll head over to the display settings and we're currently running in ultra i think that's a little bit too high so let's go down to high we'll apply those settings and then we'll jump back into the game and see what our performance is like now at this part in the game we are outside so we are kind of in the biggest kind of area where our cpu is really going to get hammered there's lots of people running around walking around doing magical things as they do in uh hogwarts world but to be honest we're not actually getting that bad a performance i thought this was going to perform way worse than it actually is we're currently getting an average of 42 frames per second with a one percent low of 25 there is no kind of real visible stutter on the screen no matter which way we look around it's not as smooth as you would like of course because that one percent low is quite low but it's actually playing way better than i thought it was going to i think you could actually get away with playing this we are getting console like fps but at a very raised graphical kind of experience i'm pretty sure though if we did some kind of playing around with the settings we could get a much better experience here so let's head back into the settings and do some kind of magic with a system like this if we go to our display settings the first thing that i'm going to do actually is i'm going to turn down the graphics options to a medium i tend to find that games look okay in a medium setting particularly when we're using older systems like this we'll just go down this system here we don't want to kind of limit frame rate we really want to see what's going on and what we'll do is we will enable the upscaling type we're going to go for something around fsr2 probably the best technology on here we're going to leave it in a quality setting so Let's head back into the game and see what kind of performance we get now. Now, I will admit image quality isn't that much worse, to be honest. I think the medium settings is probably caused more than anything. The FSR 2 with the quality setting doesn't seem to kind of affect much, really, apart from that performance in the corner. We are getting the full utilization of our GPU now, getting around 99%, as well as using around 56, 54% of that CPU, the i7-6700. But we are now getting over an average of 60 frames per second. We're getting roughly an average now of 67 frames per second with a 1% low of 40. That 40 has really helped with the smoothness, to be honest. We didn't have any kind of jerkiness before, but it just feels a lot more smoother in your hand when you're actually moving things around. So I could kind of think that, you know, this game is more than playable on this type of system. And this game is actually from 2023. So if you built a high-end system in 2015, you'd be glad to know that you can still play 2023 games. You have to tweak some settings and this is where you have to kind of set your expectations. And to be honest, should you build a system like this today? Well, this system didn't cost a lot. As you know, we got the, most of the system for free. The graphics card I did purchase, the power supply I did purchase. Actually, the i7-6700, I didn't actually pay for that either. Somebody gave me that because they are reasonably old now and people don't really want them. So the upgrade was a complete success and we've got a pretty decent system out of it. Let me know in the comments below if you have a system like this, something back from 2015. What type of games are you playing? Are you actually still getting a decent experience? I'm pretty sure there are some more really modern and really demanding games that this system would completely fall over. And the things that I'm kind of thinking here are The Last of Us Part 1 really struggles even on modern hardware and things like Starfield, which doesn't seem to run that well on anything really. And I could kind of imagine that this system would fall over on that. But for the majority of people, you are going to get some great gaming experiences, even with a system like this. And I think that i7 CPU has really helped. You guys recommended that we did that upgrade, and this is now exactly what you're going to get out of it. I'm not sure what we're going to do with this system next. Maybe we'll do some more kind of upgrades. Maybe do a RAM upgrade, see if we can get any kind of more performance out of it. But... Aside from that, I think it looks like a nice little gorgeous system to be sitting on the side. And until we do anything on that, I'm sure I'll catch you guys in the next one.